I've got an interesting story about an agony over with the FDA trials for MAPS and Lycos Pharma. First attempt to win government approval of a psychedelic drug for mental health treatment is generating skepticism about its clinical trials. A case that reveals the unique challenges of bringing mind-altering illegal drugs into medical care. Recent independent analysis questioned the integrity of patient studies that are being used to support the FDA application for MDMA. Among the most difficult to overcome, subjects in the placebo arm of the trials knew they didn't get the real drug because they didn't experience distortions in consciousness. They basically didn't get high, according to a draft report. SCER researchers said trials may have been skewed by therapist participants who were boosters of MDMA as a mental treatment, as well as large numbers of subjects who had some previous experience taking MDMA. Report cited concerns that some participants that received MDMA pressured to report good outcomes and suppress bad outcomes and flagged a documented case of therapist misconduct that raised safety risk. It's a huge decision with pretty sweeping consequences as Shane Pennington, a Washington attorney who specializes in FDA regulations involving controlled substances, to be the first shot fired. It's going to be precedential, meaning setting a precedent, not presidential. Eisner's report highlights the complexity of the FDA's decision as well as considerations for insurers who use Eisner's assessments to inform decisions about coverage. Eisner staff acknowledged that some PTSD patients experienced substantial benefit. I think that's the real story. Found that the evidence in two positive late-stage trials of therapy with MDMA was too murky to determine a net benefit or fair price, according to a draft report last month. This is pretty unusual all the way through, said David Ryan, Eisner's chief officer. If this is the best trial that can be done, it's not that good. Lycos Therapeutics, a company seeking the drug approval, has said the FDA is expected to make a decision by August, and it supports the agency scheduling an open public hearing. Stand behind the design and the results of our clinical trials and are grateful to the patients and investigators who participated. Brett Waters, Executive Director of Psychedelic Advocacy, Advocacy Group, Reason for Hope. The ICER report gives too much weight to concerns from a small number of people and that the benefits of MDMA therapy greatly outweigh the risks. If we overregulate, people won't be able to afford it and will be driven back to the underground. In the MDMA research has already proved its bona fides in decades of private clinical. A lot of that happening up here. FDA said it couldn't comment on penalty applications. The agency last summer published guidance for companies developing psychedelic medications acknowledging the unique challenges of clinical trials. Oloft and Paxil are approved by the agency to treat PTSD, a condition that affects about 5% of U.S. adults. But the drugs don't always deliver relief and come with a ton of side effects. MDMA releases chemicals in the body that affect mood and behavior and subdues brain activity associated with fear while promoting trust, according to MAPS research. Enabling patients to openly discuss traumas and locking their own inner healer. It's a very kind of new age with spiritual components, said Bruce E. Wampold, a counseling psychology professor emeritus at the University of Wisconsin at Madison, who has studied the effectiveness of psychotherapy in clinical trials. It's on the periphery of what I would say evidence-based treatments would be. DEA lists MDMA in its most restrictive category of drugs that have a high potential for abuse and no accepted medical pur purpose. Patients in the MDMA and placebo groups reported a variety of undesirable side effects, including suicidal thoughts and self-harm. Adverse events weren't significantly more common in the treatment group, and no participants who received the drug reported an outcome that was disabling, life-threatening, or required hospitalizations. Some research, researchers are doubting these safety results. Ness Devenot, a psychedelics ethics researcher who authored the petition, cited published accounts of MDMA trial participants describing how their symptoms worsened afterward. I just don't think you can make a case that the data that they've provided to FDA is an accurate representation of what's actually going on in the trials. Evanot, who has been critical of MAPS, said in an Mr. Staffers, who spoke to a handful of former patients and people associated with MAP trials, noticed the, that some of the adverse effects they learned about were not reflected in the data they had. It would have been preferable to have maybe a little more space between the organization that was promoting MDMA to therapy and the organization researching it. Eisner's Ryan said. Mr. Staff also spoke with people involved in a podcast by New York Magazine which probed the ethics of a MAPS clinical trials and interviewed some patients who said they were victimized by their therapists or pressured to report positive outcomes. Uh, uh, compounding Eisner's report uh, concerns, pardon me, the report said was that in second late stage trials published last year, 94% of participants who received MDMA and 75% of those who got the placebo correctly guessed their group. Patients who know they got the treatment might consciously or subconsciously report better outcomes to please research. Patients, like most people, are polite individuals 
They react on the social atmosphere of being in a trial. Interact the risk of, of biasing the results. The FDA suggests that a company could run two clinical trials, one comparing the drug against a placebo to better gauge its safety, and another with a controlled group that receives a subperceptual dose of the psychedelic drug or other drugs that mimics, mimics some aspects of the experience to cloud whether they're getting the therapeutic dose or not. Apps and Lycos, however, have already completed their trials when the FDA published its guidance. So, a lot is going on, and one of the biggest problems is the FDA clinical trial process is really set up in a way that uh, impossible to uh, research with psychedelics. Half people not know that that they have been given a placebo dose. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, I myself have seen a ton of benefits of MDMA. I know that therapists are using it uh, in Northern California and the world over to great effect. And I'm interested, uh, Jason, uh, Dr. Mark, if he's still here in Yarrow, what you guys have to say about this, Eddie, and, and what your thoughts are on this. This is Matthew St. Germain from Monday on the Hyatt 9 News. I, I mean, I, I feel like the reason that it's so hard to test psychedelics is because you can't get into someone's mind and see what they are seeing and experiencing. It's very true. It's very true. I feel like is MDMA a psychedelic? I think they classify it as a as a psychedelic. Yes. I mean, it has been known to cause people to listen to techno, which um, should hey, be banned easy. in like thirty eight countries. Easy, 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 easy there, easy there. Terry, just I, I, you know, it's, it's interesting because yeah. I put it in a different category, at least as a non scientist. Um, you know, I haven't seen the same risk profile in terms of hallucinations. Um, and it's interesting to me because I think going back as far as like the late 80s, they were studying MDMA for couples counseling in like places like Texas or something like that. And I'm sure that my recollection is fuzzy on this, but I'm like, okay, the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, the 2010s, the 2020s. So it's was like what, 40 or 50 years where I think we've known that there could be um, therapeutic benefits uh and yet we're still trapped in that category one scheduling uh i've never heard of anybody like totally going down a, a a slippery slope because they took they popped some tabs and they listened to some questionable techno or or better music i recommend Shaw Day and the and the neville brothers <laughs> instead but uh i just it, it's again i think it why, why are we not studying this? Why is there not greater accessibility? Why are we not uh, allowing for more um, well, the, domestic yeah, research? I mean, there, there is quite a few studies right now. I, I know uh, Rick Doblin keeps talking about the PTSD study that's going on at, uh, at, at Hawkins. And, uh, you know, it does produce, if you, you know, believe in Shulgin's uh, sort of analysis, it does produce a psychedelic effect. That said, it is an amphetamine. The, the A at the end of MDMA is, is is an amphetamine, and the molecule itself is an amphetamine, but things that, that act on 5-HT, they know, produce that psychedelic effect. And um, I think if you think about like some of Shogun's analogs that were around that structure yeah they there those are all psychedelic they, those all produce a psychedelic effect but that's very I, I guess um, I, I, um, something that yeah should be studied more and it should be looked at to see how that um, can have a therapeutic effect in behavioral disorders like PTSD or ADD or ADHD and things like that there's a book called The Secret Chief Revealed about Leo Zeff, who is a therapist out of Sonoma State University originally. He's been leading um, very secret groups of psychotherapists and used uh, MDMA for PTSD, other, other therapies, and couples therapy in um, the early 70s. And it's actually spread, and, and therapists are using it off-label, undercover, without really letting you know the FDA and others know, because they're actually seeing a huge uptick in positive outcomes people not needing therapy anymore and one of the things this does is after establishing a good rapport with the therapist it really allows a person to open up and pass their own kind of internal blocks and be more honest with the therapist which helps um, speed more radical healing uh, also there's a better drug than mdma called mda it's methyl dioxy amphetamine instead of methyl dioxy methamphetamine 
And it is highly psychedelic, incredibly visual, much clearer, and gives you less of the jaw and less of the you know, the methamphetamine side effects of MDMA. It also lasts, you know, two to three times as long. Just want to put that out there. So as for MDA by name, not MDMA. Oh boy. Um, that being said, yeah, th these substances have have had a track record of of amazing, amazing use and and, and efficacy. Biggest problem is that the FDA trials are really designed for single molecule therapy get through that are approved by the pharma, uh, uh, used by these pharma companies and patented, capture all the money. Majority of, of these single molecule therapies are actually plant derived. A lot of times you can get these plant derived healing powers, not always, but a lot of the time from actually plant sources. You get other alkaloids, phytols, esters, and all these other different chemicals with them as well. And you see a lot less side effects. That being said, the FDA clinical trial, I'm sure Dr. Mark can really give us intelligence on this, is, is for discrete single molecule therapy. Another thing that really messes it up is, you know when you've taken a psychedelic, it's not like a lot like a blood pressure medication where you can't figure out if you're on the placebo. Mm -hmm. Interesting. <laughs> That's Interesting. a good point. There's no placebo. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And on that, we're going to go to a commercial. We're going to be right back.